Okay, so uh, what we have behind us is our brand new 2016 uh, Pierce Aero XT Heavy Duty Rescue Pumper. Uh, the Kentland Volunteer Fire Department uh, is located outside of Washington, D.C. in a place called Prince George's County, Maryland. Uh, our population that we serve is anywhere from about 150,000 to uh, 300,000 people. Uh, the county itself is just under a million in population and uh, per year we run just about 5,000 incidents for fire and EMS calls. Uh, this particular piece uh, will be running probably the majority of the runs. Uh, it's going to be one of the busiest pieces in our, our firehouse. Uh, the, the apparatus itself will probably run anywhere from 2,500 to 3,000 calls per year. Um, it's equipped as both an engine and a heavy duty rescue squad and will run assignments uh, for structural fires. Uh, it can perform as either an engine company or a rescue company and also uh, it will perform a lot of vehicle extrications and things of that nature. So uh, one of the biggest features about this is our front bumper. Um, the neighborhood that we serve is uh, fairly uh, large with residential homes and houses that sit pretty close to the street. Uh, each one of these trays will have 150 feet of inch and a half hose with a fog nozzle. Uh, the reason we have them on the front bumper is due to the uh, proximity of the house to the street itself is pretty close and uh, it enables us to get a line and service rather quickly and these pretty much take the place of our middle mounted cross lays like a lot of departments have. Um, working around here, uh, besides the front bumper having a, a winch capability, uh, we also have uh, on the driver's side here, uh, we did barrier doors just for the reasoning of uh, being able to get out over top of cars. We have a lot of tight streets. Uh, we run a lot of highway areas that have Jersey barrier protection. Um, we went with the Aero XT cab just due to the fact of the durability. Uh, like I said, it's going to be a very busy piece of apparatus. Um, and you know, we, we need basically something that's going to hold up to our standards. Uh, it's it's going to run probably close to uh, 50 to 60 working fires per year. Uh, the department itself runs just over 100 working fires a year and this will take at least half of those in. Um, it has an uh, auto eject system for our uh, plug-in for a shoreline. Uh, we uh, do have mobile data computers now uh, within the county, so that'll power that when the rig is in quarters and off. Uh, we uh, spent a lot of time with the dash layout, instrumentation, uh, the switches. Uh, we made it easy so that not only the driver can take care of turning on devices, uh, but also the officer as well, especially when you're talking about the scene lighting and generator, uh, which the uh, scene lighting itself is all 12 volt scene lighting. Uh, you'll see that as we go around the rig. There's uh, lighting to the front, to the sides, and of course on the body itself. Uh, so our minimum staffing on this piece of apparatus is always four. Uh, we can ride up to as many as six individuals. Uh, each position in the cab has its own riding assignment, uh, whether it's for an engine company-based position or a rescue company-based position. Uh, the back itself is set up mostly for carrying a personnel. We do have some equipment storage, uh, but most of it is going to be towards the rear of the apparatus itself. Uh, we tried to get as much leg room as possible, being that the cab is a little bit um, slimmer than some of the other cabs that Pierce offers. Uh, we also put uh, two compartments below uh, each side of the, the rear side of the crew cab itself. Um, what will go in here on one side is going to be uh, fire extinguishers, the other side will have uh, just miscellaneous equipment. Uh, the pump is rated for uh, 1,500 gallons per minute at 150 PSI. Uh, it holds 500 gallons of water and we did go with a two-stage pump. Uh, now the reason is for us going for a two-stage pump is that some of our attack lines, our inch and a half attack lines, uh, they're smaller in diameter obviously with a greater pressure needed, um, so that's why we decided to, to stick with the two-stage pump. Um, we also uh, took the liberty of, of taking the space that most people have for cross lays. This is actually going to be for our what we call our high-rise racks, uh, which are port portable hose bags. Uh, we do not have cross lays or side pulls from this piece of apparatus, kind of like I explained with the bumper lines, so we turned this into a storage area to make sure we didn't waste any space. Uh, the pump itself is laid out uh, pretty well, I mean, everything is color coded, uh, everything is pretty, flows pretty well. Um, also put side steps on here to access the top where our uh, deck gun or our wagon pipe is, as well as entry point up to where the generator is. Uh, on the sides here, um, you'll notice we, we do run a lot of highway incidents, uh, so you'll notice that there is lighting throughout the perimeter of the sides of the rig, uh, whether it's at the footsteps, on the uh, running rails, or you know, all the way around to the sides of the bumpers. Uh, the compartmentization, uh, being that this thing is going to run as a heavy duty rescue squad as well as an engine, um, we had to put a lot of thought into how we laid out the compartments. 
uh, and also these things are going to get used quite often. So we did opt to go with the darker color. Uh, we did light up the compartments with LED strip lighting. Uh, but the reason that we went with the uh, color that we did is because these things will get beat up pretty bad um, with the amount of, of work that they're going to see. Uh, we laid this thing out pretty much as a, a big puzzle. Um, you know, we wanted to make sure that it was easy to work off of, that the equipment was easily to get off uh, in, a, in a moment's notice and it was efficient to work from. So as you go around here and you look at the compartments, you'll see uh, that everything kind of has its own little place. Uh, once all the equipment is mounted, uh, again, it's going to be you know, as efficient as possible to get off and put into operation. Uh, we went with a stainless steel toolbox. Also for some of the higher compartments, uh, we have rollout trays that actually come down to an angle so it's easier uh, to get stuff from the street side. Um, on the sides here, we did go with our spare bottle compartments. It carries three on each side, so there will be one extra SCBA cylinder for each one of the members. Obviously the fuel fill is in a normal location, and then on the back, they pretty much, the compartments mirror each other in the rear, uh, but this is where our electrical cord reels are coming off, as well as uh, two on each side, uh, Helmatro Hurst reels, or uh, hydraulic reels, I'm sorry. So this will essentially be most of the extrication equipment. So as we come around to the back here, uh, this is one of the really good features about this, is that we uh, wanted to make sure that our hose bed was as low as possible to make it efficient with getting hose lines off and re-racking our supply line. Um, so we got it lower down as good as possible. Uh, we did all of our ladder mounting through the tank, as well as ran the piping for the rear discharges through the tank as well. Um, Basically from left to right, there's going to be a variety of attack lines. Uh, the two larger compartments up top uh, will have our supply line, which will be 800 feet each. And if you look right below the uh, hose bed itself, we also have our 24 foot and 14 foot uh, ground ladders that are stowed in there. Uh, we opted not to go with a closure just because, again, we're trying to be as efficient po as possible with getting the equipment off. Uh, below that we have another compartment which will store some of our uh, air tools. Uh, if you look just below the rear step, and uh, there actually is one on each side as well as the front, there's a uh, mounting point uh, for the winch as well as a power outlet so that we can use all four sides of the piece of apparatus with the winch. Again on this side, as I mentioned earlier, uh, this pretty much mirrors the uh, hydraulic tool compartment on the opposite side so that we can work off both sides. The compartment on this side that we've gone with is going to be uh, mostly for cribbing. That's why you don't see any type of uh, shelving or any mounting like that. Uh, that's going to hold the majority of our stabilization uh, wood. So, the firefighter air pack seats. so another option that we went with is due to the fact that we have a uh, winch point coming off the front and we wanted to maintain that low hose bed in the rear is uh, to be able to, to spot a hydrant because we run hydranted areas basically mostly wherever we run. Uh, we put a 50 foot intake that's going to come off the officer side so that we can spot the hydrant in the front or the rear and do basically the same as you would do if you had a front or rear intake. Uh, we recessed the master intake valve. It does have a master intake valve handle up top which is uh, manually turned on and off. Uh, we opted not to go with anything electric or air just because of some uh, failures we've had in the past. Um, we also mounted a 200-foot uh, uh, booster reel on top of this. Um, it holds 200 feet of one-inch booster line. Uh, what this is going to be used for is any type of rubbish fires, uh, anything small uh, that involves maybe uh, only a part of a car or uh, something small in nature. It's, it won't be used for anything structural. So, as you can see on this side, I mean, it's pretty much uh, same type of compartment as we had. On the other side of the cab in the bottom, again, just trying to take up every inch and make sure that we can, you know, carry as much as needed on here. Uh, you know, like I said, we try not to waste any space at all. Um, in the front here, uh, you'll see that uh, one good design with this is that some of the older Aero XD cabs uh, may not have fit as well with uh, larger people up front. Uh, one thing that Pierce has done is redesigned the front, which uh, we really took to when we decided which cab to pick. Uh, because we want to try to get as much room as possible for the officer up front, both in the front and sideways. Thank you for watching this program. I uh, hope this has been informational uh, with the Cantland Volunteer Fire Department's rescue engine. Uh, we appreciate everything that Pierce and our local dealer Atlantic has done for us. And uh, hopefully you guys will see this on the street soon, and I'm sure you'll see it on plenty of incidents.